Now, for some inexplicable reason, a sequel was made to The Unborn in 1993, but then not released until 1995. Both films are Roger Corman productions, but are better than the usual 90s Roger Corman fare. Doesn't mean they're good, just that they're good for 90s Roger Corman movies. It took me several seconds of scrutiny to even identify what the hell is on the poster art for The Unborn 2. We start with Robin Curtis, aka the second Savick, on the playground, and oh my god, she's some kind of baby Terminator. Michelle Green from LA Law is moving into her new home with her infant son. She's a children's writer, which is weird because Brooke Adams' character in the first film was also a children's writer. Apparently only children's writers can be the lead character in this mutant baby franchise. And skipping ahead a moment, I kept waiting for it to be revealed that this was in fact the same character, but it's like they chickened out at the last minute and refused to commit to such a thing. It's so weird. Also, her son is clearly a mutant puppet baby, and yet she's oblivious to this fact. Based on how the first film ends, this is why I was convinced it was going to be the same character. Savick continues her wholly unpleasant mission of shooting babies to death and eventually gets to Michelle Green's name on her hit list. They interact a bit without any baby murder, and at some point Savick explains that the babies use mind control to keep the moms from knowing they're mutant babies. She also had a mutant baby, but after it killed her husband and then tried to kill her, she became the baby terminator. It was touched on a bit in the first film, but this one goes on to explain what James Karen was actually up to. His minion, Nick, from Family Ties, explains. Dr. Meyerling cared. Cared about the air. Cared about the water. The soil. Cared about the whole planet. Cared about the fact that too many goddamn and different people are being born on that planet. I worked with Meyerling for 10 years. Ten years. Do you think I was going to let a decade's worth of dreams slip away? Huh? Huh? What does all this have to do with Joey? Think, Catherine. Think! People of average intelligence are not going to make the difference. These children will make the difference. Not some useless morality binding them. These children are our only hope. You should be proud, Catherine. Smile, because you've been a part of it all. It's just too bad that we don't need you anymore. Basically, his solution to Earth's certain environmental doom was to try and create Jim Henson's Silicon Valley babies. Yes, there's nothing I can imagine more that would save humanity from its own stupidity than mutants without morals killing everything. this fight, good lord. I'll say this, at least both of these movies, in their own unique way, are committed to their dumb premise. And while neither movie is what I would call good, the second one is the more watchable of the two. Which is insane to say, since this movie is about someone shooting babies to death. <laughs> It's got this neat camera shot at one point though, and it's the rare horror movie that has a definitive ending instead of a hot bullshit sequel hook. Still, this movie is about shooting babies to death. Then there's the whole weird thing about calling this the unborn 2, when literally every baby in this movie has already been born, so they can get shot. Did I mention this whole thing is about shooting babies to death? 